right, we're going to be watching Too Strong, who's playing Sombra. Uh, and this is Gold 1. Uh, this, is, this is Gold 1. Sorry, it took a little bit. There's a lot of, a lot of text in here. Gold 1. Uh, I don't know if this is PC or console. I assume it's PC. Hi guys, I play Sombra a lot. I will say right now that I'm more often than not unwilling to change heroes because I want to play what I find fun more than I want to win, but I find it very difficult to win games. I get flamed before you even lost spawn, and even when I'm feeling like I'm performing well, killing key targets, etc., people fixate on my damage numbers. I also have an issue where squishy targets start pocketing, peeling the hell out of each other to the point where I'm having to 1v3 the back line, and if teammates in some games refuse to help, it sounds like a use slash DPS problem. We end up getting not much done even though there's a 2v4 on the front line. In this VOD, I mostly play health pack because healers aren't really interested in me, but I understand that I could do a better job keeping tempo if I play my translocator close to the action. Whenever I do that, though, my healers flat out refuse to heal me and type to me that I should go play health packs like a real Sombra. Anyway, advice would be appreciated as to how to improve with this hero. So, I'm not a Sombra player. I probably have less than an hour of her lifetime, but at least the gold level, I feel like I have enough general game sense and familiarity with her kit to kind of help you out. I think that there are... Um, probably three different aspects to Sombra, okay? Uh, aspect number one is the harassment, which is you just kind of play sneaky, find, find a support or backliner, you poke them a bunch, and then you disappear, and you just keep doing that annoying, like, and, and just being annoying, and you hope that's enough value to win the game, and you farm EMP, obviously, and use EMP to try to, try to win team fights. Option number two is more of like an assassin style, so I would say that's sort of like style number one, but you have like more of a commitment to get a kill, and it's less about annoying people that you know won't die, and actually trying to save your, your opportunities to actually confirm a kill, right? So for example, if you're like, I could poke here, but there's only a 10% of me get chance of me getting killed, you don't bother, and you just sit in stealth and you wait for you to actually get a kill. And I think this is often it comes down to synergizing with your team timing. And option number three, which is funny, I think I saw a video on this even in high, in, in high elos, it was like top 500 even, where Sombras will actually play with the team, <laughs> often even unstealth, and just like play like frontliner and just, just deal a whole bunch of damage and hack, hack at the right times and only stealth occasionally. So we're going to ignore option number three right now. I think that's like, I think it probably is a real option, but not the one option that most people want to play Sombra for anyway, which I think is, is your case. So we're going to do our option number three and focus on option number one and option number two. So I would suspect if you're losing, you're probably doing too much of option number one, which is more like harassing versus option number two, which is like confirming kills. I would also <coughs> um, say that if you enjoy playing Sombra, just play Sombra, right? Don't let other people complain. Like they're, you're not here to, to make their lives easier. You know what I mean? Like you're here to, to, to have fun, play the game your way, you win, you lose. As long as you're having fun, you do you. Um, I'm not going to tell you to switch off Sombra at all. It, I don't even think that there is a clear counter to Sombra, so it's not like the hero composition matters that much. I think you can you can play Sombra in any lineup. You just got to get better at Sombra if you if you want to win. Um, I would also say that if you get tilted or frustrated when other people are yelling at you, just mute voice and chat. Easy, right? Problem solved, especially if you're playing Sombra. Cool. So just really quick, because I don't think I've ever done a Sombra video before. I'm going to run through stats really quickly. So Sombra has one of the highest DPS in the game, which I think a lot of people are not real aware of. So her base damage for machine pistol is 150, which is a lot. So for protective soldiers, 162. Um, but when the target is hacked, it does 188 damage per second. So really, really good. So you can kill a standard 200 health hero in just over one second, assuming no headshots and perfect aim, which is, I think, not that unreasonable with her machine pistol. Uh, in fact, I would say when Overwatch 2 beta was out, she was super broken and was constantly killing people all the time. It was very, very hard to deal with. Her hack's kind of weird. Um, it's different than it was in Overwatch 1, so it lasts 8 seconds after you hack somebody, but it only locks out their abilities for the first second and a half. So they can't use abilities for a second and a half, then for 6 and a half seconds they can use abilities, but they are still quote-unquote hacked. And the only real meaningful difference there is that you do a bonus 25% damage um, while they are hacked. So, you know, it's uh, it's not like before where hack was synonymous with like no abilities. Now hack is the ability lockout initially, followed by just uh, damage after that. Anyway, um, translocator or the hacks on the short cooldown, right? It's got a four four second cooldown. Uh, if you take any damage while you're hacking, then it resets the cooldown, so four seconds all over again. But if they interrupt it, like break line of sight or use a shield or something, then it doesn't get interrupted, so you can still hack again right away, which is kind of interesting. 
uh, translated credit stealth, not nothing we were to really focus about for this. Uh, for EMP, it does 40% of whatever their current health is on destroy shield, and at the same direction you have hack. So everybody's locked out abilities for a second and a half, and then six and a half seconds where they do bonus damage. Okay, so let's start this. I think first of all, a big part of you know any lineup, but especially for for Sombra, I would say Sombra and Tracer is understanding what what are my timings. Okay, I would say most likely, having not seen the release replay, your biggest issue is probably your timing of when you go in. You want to go in against the land that you currently have, which is Rhine Soldier. You probably want to go in when their team is actively engaged with your Rhine, right? So when the Joker Queen like pops shout and is charging in, etc., that's the moment that you kill someone in the backline. Probably, probably the Hanzo, maybe the Moira or Mercy. I think the May is functionally impossible to kill unless you know that she doesn't have ice block. So I would probably just be chilling here and waiting for that particular moment. Um, if you want to farm ult charge, you could do more poking initially and and like that's kind of like the option one versus option two, right? Like you could just kind of poke out here a little bit to farm ult charge faster and then go for a kill, or you could just play it safe and look for like the alpha strike definitely gonna get a kill situation. I do think that it's so important to be able to reliably kill a 200 health hero during hack. If you can't do that, you will struggle climbing. Here. Right, you're just chilling Watch for now. For this one. Right, I think this is the right call to just. My aid. So, I disagree with this hack, for starters. Oh, the other thing is, um, I think I remember seeing this tip a while back. Sombers are a little too obsessed with trying to hack. Like sometimes you can just straight up kill somebody without hacking them, and it can be faster versus giving them the warning that they're about to get hacked. So, right here. I don't think I want to hack the the Mercy because she's just going to fly anyway and gets around cover, which is exactly what happens here. And you see that doesn't do anything. Now imagine the situation, instead of hacking the Mercy, my aid. right? I just go right here and I just one clip the Moira. And yeah, she probably fades out, but I guarantee you, you're going to do like 150 plus damage just aiming for her head right now before she can react. And that's a way better option than trying to hack the Mercy here. Okay, it's translocate up top. So, this is a great example for like, what are we, what are we doing right now? Like, what, how does this hack help our team? Like, she's already charged in. So basically, she only, she, she's shouted. Okay, number one is when you, you, you see that she's shouted already when you hack. So she's already not vulnerable. Okay, because shout gives her 200 health. It's very, very hard to, to blow through 200 health that quickly. Then she gets pinned, so she's already stunned for the next second, so you only end up disabling her for half a second, and you give away your position, and your four second cooldown or hack. So why is that valuable? Right? Like, that that's the kind of thing that I want you to think about, is was this hack useful at all? Because my argument would be, no, it's not useful in, in any way. I think, if anything, you actually want to hack the May here, because she has the opportunity, I don't know if we saw it or not, she has the opportunity to wall, she doesn't have wall right now, to like wall or like do a lot of damage to your Ryan because of the flank angle that she's on, and you could blow up this May really quickly. So if you hack this May and start shooting her, you'll do 100 to 175 damage, and then she'll be forced to block, and that's good value. Hacking this Junker Queen and then doing absolutely nothing, and then walking to a mini when you're full health, it, this is useless. Like, you don't need to go so deep into this room, right? Like, they're clearly not paying attention to you, so you can go a little closer. So, your rides are run over now. I I think you fight that more, honestly, because she's, she's separated from her team, and like, what other value are you going to get here? Yeah, see how much damage you did to that May? Like, imagine if you did it earlier when they were trying to fight your Rhine. You're mine now. So, I don't understand why you're going this far back. You know? Like, and what is this translocator? Like, you really want to be playing probably here at the furthest and trying to regain and, and fight in, 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 uh, up front with the team. You know? And if you need a higher translocator, like, put it, like, right here or something. Um... But going this far back is a huge problem because you're simply not positioned well. And I think that if you play Tracer, you understand because there's a lot of similarities between this and like Tracer style for like how to set up. Okay, right now your best location is to be already like over here. Like this would be great, right? You just come behind the Hanzo, right? Hack, just kill him. Okay, that would be great value. But staying in the front, it takes you too, way too long to reposition. Right now your Winston's in. The moment your Winston's in, you gotta be fighting right now. Like this is your moment. Like you can't not be fighting. You should have probably hacked the Moira and then killed the Moira right now. See, the Mercy's not vulnerable because nobody's shooting at the Mercy, but the Winston was shooting at the Moira. 
So yeah, the Mercy's hacked right now, but like you see how she's not even close to dying. So your overall tiger priority and timing is way off. Also, I'm starting to wonder if this is console versus PC. The thing is, and like this is another problem, your aim is just not good enough. <laughs> like this Mercy is basically like not really dodging at all. And look how much you miss here. Like so far, I think you hit four bullets out of 13. I think you've hit six bullets out of 28. That's seven out of 39 maybe 8 out of 45 like your your accuracy is really 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 poor um it's 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 like 20% maybe and in that situation i would expect i would expect like a minimum 50% like minimum 50% accuracy right now like she can't even guardian angel right And the thing is, like, she ultimately is a very aim reliant hero. It is good that you get this kill here. You tempt fate by by walking in a straight line with the Hanzo. Like the Hanzo should have killed you right now. He's gonna completely whiff here. Like he whiffs that shot and then tries to melee you for some reason. Like you are very very lucky to not die. You gotta contest point. You have to you have to uh, isolate. <laughs> I mean, yeah, at that point, it's either unstealth on point and try to contest or don't bother at all. But I think not contesting at all is also fine. You probably feel good about those kills. Those kills don't mean anything at all. Literally nothing. Like, if you didn't get those kills, it wouldn't have changed anything. Because they've already capped and their spawn is close. So who cares? You know? Yep, this is good. This is really good. Yes, that's really good, right? Much better accuracy, good assassination. Right? You're going to make them nervous now. You look for the mercy. And I'm back. See, I think I think you you get too overzealous here, right? Don't don't pop it this early. Like, wait for her to actually try to res if she is gonna res. Otherwise, she's just going back to go pick up the Hanzo. I think this hack is fine. The thing is, like, you already have EMP, so you're not. You're not really farming ulti here, and she's not really in danger of dying. So I think it actually would have been way better to go after the Mei. I think you'd just be a little more patient here. So for example, you saw the Mei going in. This would have been huge. If you hack the Mei right now, the Mei dies. Oh no. Yeah, so... I think simply doing nothing there would have been a better call. Because if you've been able to... Imagine you're here right now and you can EMP the team, that would be extremely helpful because you would shut down Coalescence, uh, you do a lot of damage, so they're going to feel nervous about following up on this, and you'd be able to kill the Mei. But... Oh, good hack, Nomura. Oh, Mercy's here. That shooting's way too early, but you'll get it anyway. Good. I wouldn't bother with the Junker Queen, right? Just go over and help with the Mei. It's, it's tough for Monkey to kill Mei alone, right? If she has cooldowns, it's really hard for Monkey to kill, kill Mei. Yeah, see? Right? This Mei is probably never going to die, but if you just come over here initially instead of trying to fight the Junker Queen, that would have been a big difference. Right? Now she's got block back, your Monkey's low. It's also a little concerning that you haven't found an opportunity to use EMP yet. It's good. Oh, we're in trouble. I would definitely, yeah. <laughs> if you're one body shot of all. It's tough for doing winning at the wrong time. Uh, yeah, I assume you're typing to your team. Just don't do it. Just don't even interact with them. 
nothing you can do here. But I think that the issue is like you really need to find an opportunity to EMP earlier. Like think about it, we've already got two full points, like three and a half minutes of gameplay, and you haven't gotten EMP off. Right? You're a little too obsessed with trying to do these like flank routes. But like you really need to EMP. Basically, I mean you're doomed throws here, but you really need to find a way. Like, imagine that you hadn't gone for that flank and you were like waiting, you know, somewhere over here. Then you could have EMP'd when your demon made a mistake and saved him. I think you need to stay more ready. Oh, I would not get that close to Junker Queen. That feels like a crazy idea. Like why would you why would you get closer why would you just run in a straight line at the Junker Queen? Right? It's like she could have killed you herself in two shots and she misses the second shot, it's the only reason you don't die. The first shot took out like two thirds of your health. It's actually crazy that you tried to do that. Now your team's staggering. Right, which is partially your fault because you just weren't there. Again, I think you'd be better off just shooting the Mercy there before trying to hack. I think you would... I think you probably should have EMP'd here. Yes. <laughs> so... What you're doing right now is, like, not super helpful. I mean, I guess the Blizzard's, like, zoning your team, but... Like, you're, you're giving up all momentum here. That's a terrible EMP! <laughs> What is this plan? What did you think was going to happen here? This is crazy. Even if you lived there, what's your plan? You're not going to kill both of them. Like, there's no chance. That was a huge throw. Like... I also don't understand why you didn't just go out the right door. Like, just go out right now. Yeah, see? Maze low. Maze located. Like, where, where are you going? Why are you resetting? Like, you don't have time. This is, you have like only a few seconds until the point is capped. Like, you should be out here. Your, your monkeys and tank farm. Like, stop trying to target the tank. And you're not even shooting the tank. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, you're just not doing anything. Like, you have like a couple of like fine plays here where you're like one-shotting people. But beyond that, like your kills are just never well-timed. And I don't think, especially because you're probably like, you know, like a somber one trick or close to it, I don't think you understand the timing of when the fights need to happen. So like, if we go back and analyze all these fights, like let's imagine this first team fight, okay? So I think this is a great example where you just don't understand the, the urgency. So right here, you translocate, okay? Your Ryan is here, like this fight is committed. They pop shout, okay, your Ryan is charging in, you must fight right now. Like literally right now or the fight's over. But for you to take this like break, you see how much damage your Ryan is doing? Like that's five people shooting your Ryan while you're doing absolutely nothing. And then you're shooting from far away, but like this isn't committed, like you gotta get in there, right? You gotta be blowing somebody up. And now your Ryan dies. That's no good here, right? And that's a big reason why your team loses that first fight. Okay, so let's, let's look up and set up for a second. Right? You have second fight, you should already have been in position, right? Literally, you should be somewhere in the back line here waiting. You had playing time, you never died. So you should already have been in here. Right? You're still hanging out back here. Winston's in. You should already be here shooting at the target. Okay? But like you're here, which is still okay, but again, you're not shooting. And I would be so frustrated as a Winston because I'm like, okay, I went in, but now I'm not getting any help from my DPS. Right? You go and you hack this Mercy, which does absolutely nothing. See? Like, you're not affecting, you did, I don't know, 50, 60 damage to the Mercy there? Of course you're going to lose the fight, you're just not doing anything. Like, the supports are probably doing more damage than you are. And again, it's not about, like, total amount of damage. Like, I, I don't think your team needs you to spam people down. But when they go in, you need to be in there do, getting something done. But, like, constantly, like, not being ready for it, and then not sinking. Like, your monkey's in again right now. Like, where are you? You're, like, way the heck over at the rear mini, which is why I said is that you should have been playing this front mega sorry you're the rear mega you should be playing at the front mega right now because your monkey needs you right now and you're just not doing anything see like he's he's literally getting chased by four people right now and now you come in right 
Now you're working on the Mercy, finally. All right, still working on her, working on her, working on her, working on her. Okay, yeah, fine. That's like the first thing that you did on the entire point that made any difference on winning. But the problem is it still happened way too late. The monkey is in for like 10 plus seconds before you get there. You know, let's count it out. Monkey forces wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is the first time you start doing anything. <laughs> It's literally 10 seconds before you start having any impact on this fight. So when that is happening, yeah, you're going to lose a lot of games because you're just not doing enough. Right? You should have, like I said, you should have already been lurking back here, waiting for the monkey to engage, and then got in with the monkey. And I think that the, a big reason why your monkey ends up swapping off here is because your monkey gets really frustrated that there just isn't enough follow-up. And so he tries to go Doomfist, which is more solo kill potential. So, I mean, the kill on the Hanzo was the kill on the Hanzo was good. This chase was bad, right? I think watching to see, hey, she's gonna get the res off, then you can hack and try to kill her, fine. But once she goes there, give up. Just give up. Go back and fight this. Because this should be a five on three. Because the the Hanzo and the Mercy are already back in spawn. The fact that they're back here is already great for you. You have an opportunity here to wipe the front of the team. But because you don't do that and you chase them in the back line. Right? It's like, yeah, you're quote-unquote like wasting their time, but their time is already wasted. Because even if you weren't there, they still have to walk back from spawn. So in fact, you're just wasting your time for nothing. They're wasting your time, not vice versa. And because you're not here, your team isn't able to clean up, which then turns this into a roll, right? Because you lose, you lost the Winston, right? And now they pop ultimates because they have momentum, right? You still haven't gotten EMP off. This is the reason why you're losing games. It's because your timing is way off. It's like super, super, super far off. All right, so hopefully on offense, I would say I hope this goes a little better, but seeing how, as how little time there is, I doubt it. Alright, so again, I'm looking for an opportunity for when my Rhine is committed. Right? And I want to choose my target carefully. And again, you don't have to hack. Like sometimes you, the hack itself will take so long that it's worth it to just shoot them. So this is really, really dangerous to do this. Because you're hacking next to two other people. Okay? You're leaving your back exposed to the Mei and the Hanzo. So you can't even tell if they're shooting at you or dodging you. And the Moira is here to heal. So. Like, you're committing way too hard to try to get this kill instead of just poking and harassing her. But also, the timing isn't right. Look at the fight. Okay? Do they look like, oh man, they're all super distracted? No, the Rhine Shield's just broken. The Rhine's gonna back off. You know? Like, nothing's happening here. Just chill. Just go all the way back here. Wait for your Rhine to get shield back, to get health back, and then go in. Okay? Again, I think now is the time where the, where the ride's low. Right now is the time you could try to get to get a kill. But see, you don't even try right now. So that's fine. I mean, get heal. I mean, it wasn't a great opportunity, but that was the best opportunity you've had recently. Right? Just reset. Wait. I mean, now your team is just sitting on spawn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your team is definitely tilted here. They're just like. Are they even gonna leave spawn? All right, you just saw the Mora fade, so now's a great opportunity to kill the Mora. The Mora just faded. Just kill the Mora. No. <laughs> Why are you taking the mercy? Just kill the Mora. You just saw it hurt her fade. Yeah, I mean, I I think the rest of this game is not really a real game for whatever reason, your team is just super tilted. Um, but partially that could be because, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it's no excuse for them to tilt, but like you definitely weren't doing anything in the first half. <laughs> so I don't really know that there's a lot more in this video to really talk about because I don't know why you throw a translocator up there, but. Huh, mercy found you. 
Yeah, I think this EMP is fine. Pretty good aim. Versus on you. Should be able to melee. No. Oh my god. At least cart's moving now. Yeah, good hack. I feel like both teams are just screwing around right now. <laughs> Got very lucky after you ate that headshot. I would have translocated after that. Like you already have momentum, so you don't need to commit for a kill. Again, I don't know why you keep trying to come this way. And I can think, just go, just go to the back line. Right, like, what did this hack accomplish? Now you just revealed your position for nothing. Like, it literally does nothing. Yeah, it's, this is a tough position to translocate to because there's no healing here. I mean, it's not that unreasonable. Like, you're going to complain, oh, I don't get healed by my supports here, but, like, your gen's pretty busy right now. <laughs> This is why I do not recommend throwing Translocator somewhere where you're not going to be able to get any healing out of it, right? Why not just play right side? You know, you have the mini over here, you have the mega over here, right? You could play over here and play this mini. You got a lot of options here. Also, you shouldn't have gotten that low, knowing, like, the resource situation. Like, your other support is... in spawn, so... Uh, it's pretty hard. It's, it's, it's not really fair to blame your support in this situation. <laughs> Okay, so I, I think we should, we should stop there. So, you know, you're getting flamed every game as though you're a problem. I mean, I would say if your gameplay looks like this, yeah, you often are the problem. You're just not doing enough. And granted, Sombra's also an unusual hero to play. Um, people definitely need to get used to, like, how to play with her, and that's kind of something that they need to get used to. But, like, you just need to be better than that, right? You need to get around the fact that you're not always going to have, like, perfect synergy with your team. I think a lot of your decision-making is suspect. The way you path, the targets you choose, and the timing of when you attack are all big-time problems from my perspective. Also, the moment you get EMP, you should be looking to pop EMP as soon as possible because that will win a team fight. And then as soon as you win that one, you can farm another EMP. Like it took you so long to pop EMP, you could have gotten two EMPs, right? And and then you would have been able to win two team fights instead of just one. Except the one EMP you finally popped was totally useless. And it just felt like you were already tilted and just kind of gave up at that point in time. So like if you give up, then certainly don't blame your teammates for giving up too. So I, I, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of issues here. I do think that there's a lot of credibility to your teammates simply saying that, like, you're not doing very much in the front line because you're also not doing very much in the back line necessarily. Like, you're going to over-index on, like, the couple of solo kills you got and not see the entire rest of the game where you were doing virtually nothing. Okay, I'll stop there. Hopefully this is helpful.